Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday thought, I would like to talk to you guys about the Torah of Moses from the plates of brass. Several years ago, the Lord told me that he wanted me to translate the plates of brass. And I will never forget that experience. I was in prayer, driving in my car, back when I didn't work from home. I would pray when I was driving. When you have a large family, morning commute and afternoon commute is a wonderful time to pray to the Lord. I was usually driving through the countryside. And so I had no problem being able to speak and listen to the Lord. And one morning on my drive to work, I was praying. The Lord came to me and told me he wanted me to translate the plates of brass. And I'll never forget because, number one, that's a pretty shocking thing, you know. I'm like, who am I to translate anything? And I was already struggling with with some things, you know, the fellowship. <clears throat> I, I still was trying to figure out basically what the Lord was asking me to do with the fellowship. I, I really didn't understand. And... <clears throat> The Lord came to me and told me this. I was like, okay, well, listen, you know, here's my list of demands. I want someone to be a scribe so that as I'm, as I'm doing this, there's someone else that's doing it with me. I want to see the physical plates of brass. I want to hold them in my hand, and I want to look at them, feel them, and translate them. I want an urn and summon. I don't want to do a rock in the hat. I want the actual, whether it's glasses and chest plate, or the, the two stones like they describe in the Old Testament. I, I want that. And in addition to that, you know, Joseph Smith had witnesses. I'm going to need witnesses. I want I want all these things. There's a precedent has been set by Joseph Smith that this is how it's done. So I want to make sure I do this right. So give me these things and I'll translate this for you. And the Lord, being God and all knowing, I can feel him basically kind of very kindly smiling and laughing, not in a, in a cruel or mean way, but in amusement to, to what I'm saying, and, and again, in love. And, and I felt overwhelmed by his love as I, was, as, I was talk, as I was conversing with him. And he said, we shall see. And I went home and told my wife, and my wife responded, as only my wife could, well, if anybody's going to do it, you make the most sense. I, I, I don't know anybody else that would be able to do such a thing. And uh, I'm always impressed that my wife has so much more confidence in, my, in me than I do in myself. But from that point forward, the Lord set me on a path of learning. Because I was not going to be given physical plates of brass. I was not going to be given someone that's going to transcribe what I was doing. And one night I was awoken in my sleep and I went downstairs and prayed the Lord because I felt impressed by the Spirit and something was coming. And, you know, there's, this, there's this feeling I get when the Lord has a revelation for me and like I just I just know. And I don't doesn't mean I know what's going to happen. I just know that something's going to happen. So it's sometime between 3 and 4 in the morning. I'm sitting down at my computer and I'm waiting for a revelation to come. And the Lord comes to me. And he says, it's time for you to start translating the plates of brass. And so I'm like, okay, I, am I traveling somewhere? Am I, am I going to Central or South America? Am I going up to New York? Where am I getting the plates of brass? And the Lord instructed me on it basically took me into a in vision into a cave and the cave was lit by um, fire like torches and so it was very well lit I don't want you to think that it was like a dark cave and although there were a lot of things around in the cave my focus was on a table a chair and the plate of brass and I went and I 
looked at them. I was standing over them, and I could see them. And it was written in Egyptian. And I, I can't read Egyptian. And so I asked the Lord, how am I supposed to read this? And I was looking around the room, like, is there an arm and thumb around here somewhere? What, what do I do? And he told me to open the book. And so I just randomly opened the book. And all of a sudden, above the Egyptian was, in Hebrew, fire. And I recognize the Hebrew letters because even though I'm not fluent in Hebrew, I still know what the letters look like. And so I said to the Lord, you know, this is this is amazing. This is this is I think mean, I'm sorry, but this is really cool. This is wow, this is awesome. I, I can't read Hebrew either. And so the Lord said, Look again. And then above the Hebrew, and I don't really know how to express this or explain this, because it was like kind of like a see through parchment. To where, you know, at this point, I could really, I could see the plate of brass, but I definitely couldn't really make out the words on it, and the Egyptian. I could still see the fire, but then there was also like this, this parchment where there was writing in English. And to be clear here, that isn't always how it was. The Egyptian, the plates were obviously always going to be there, so I was translating. So in a sense, I was able to see the plates, just not in the physical realm, like I requested. But it wasn't the way that I meant when I requested it. And there was the fire in Hebrew, but I didn't really understand. I, know, I, I still don't. I'm still not fluent in, in Hebrew. And there wasn't always English. Sometimes I would see it and the Lord would just tell me in my mind what it says. Sometimes the Lord would tell me to take that Hebrew and go and search what it means. Because this, this wasn't just a, I'm, I'm reading a book in this cave. I need somebody to write it down. The Lord wanted me to understand certain things about it. And so because of that, there's a couple of things, a couple of points I, I want to make that I find interesting. One is I, I was able to understand the translation process that Joseph Smith went through because there's times when you, know, you could translate it as this or this. And the way Joseph Smith handled that was, was he would say, or in other words, and, and he would put the other way of putting it. Because in Hebrew, when you're translating, you know, and this is probably true of most translating, most languages, there's more than one way to, to translate it. Um, there's expressions and things that, that don't translate literally. And so therefore... I had to seek revelation or cultural understanding in order to properly put down what it said. The reason why I want you to know this isn't because the translation process is necessarily important. If the Lord calls someone else to translate other portions of the plates of brass, I can't guarantee that it's going to be the exact same way that the Lord revealed it to me. The reason why I want you to understand that is because when you read this book, you'll notice inside there's a lot of Hebrew words. Well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense considering the fact that the plates of brass were written in Egyptian. Except that I was given the Hebrew. And so, because of that, I had it there to read. Now, I want you to understand also that there are some Hebrew words in here that aren't in the Bible. They are words and terms, terminology, that the Lord gave me to use today. For example... Calling God the name is in here a number of times. But that's that's a, a more modern Hebrew way of speaking. It wasn't until after Lehi and his family left Jerusalem that people's you know that 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 Judea became a monotheistic religion, first off. And second off, that they started moving away from using the name of God. His name was used very frequently beforehand. And that is evident because of the various names of God that are in here. Though the Lord told me that he wanted me to make sure that certain Hebrew words are in here for better understanding of what's going on. Also, you'll notice in here, I'm just going to go randomly, but you'll notice that there's a lot of notes at the bottom. 
some of those notes are scriptures that the Lord impressed upon me as I was reading through here. Some of them are notes for me as the translator. Some of the concepts as I was learning, I, as I've learned new things, I put them in the notes so that other people wouldn't have to go out and you can obviously still go out and do your own research. But here's basically what I found out, and you can use that as a starting point. Some of those notes were too extensive. And so because of that, I put a dictionary in the back. And the dictionary is a pretty decent size. Um, I don't know if dictionary is the right word, but it's what I titled it. And it, it goes through everything that you need. So if you're flipping through here and you say, so you go see Elohim. You just look in the back and, and look up Elohim. But I want you to understand that the point of this book isn't to bring people to the fellowship. It's not to help people understand that I'm a prophet. It has nothing to do with me. The purpose of this book is the Lord told me, and, and I, I, well, I want to finish my story real quick here. That night I translated a few chapters of the book of Melchizedek. And later on, you know, I, I worked on that for a bit, and then um, the Lord told me, no, I want you to go work on the, the book of Moses, first, first Moses. And so I worked on that. Um, but the reason why this is published now, instead of waiting until the whole plate to brass to translate, is because there's a lot, there's a lot in there. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if I'll be the one to finish it. But the Lord told me in Revelation that this was supposed to be translated as important. There is information in here about becoming Zion, and how not to become Zion. There's information in here about the Divine Feminine, Heavenly Mother. There's information in here about the, the sisterhood, the, the priestesses in Moses' time and before. There, this does not hold all the answers, but it's a starting point to help let us know what was done in the past as a part of the restoration of all things. Now, I want you to know that this is available for free online as a PDF. It is also available on Amazon and in our store on Lulu. And there's a link if you go to cjccf.org slash scriptures, then, you know, you can get the free PDF or there's a link to where you can order this book. Um, there will be a hardback version coming out. It's going to be a little expensive. And really, the only reason why I'm putting that one out there is because there's people who ask for a hardback. I mean, when I first started all of this, my whole thing was, let's make it free. Let's get it all in line. No one needs to buy anything. But so many people are always asking for hardbacks of everything and paperbacks of everything. They want a physical copy. They don't just want to print it out themselves. It's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm willing to take the time for you to do that. And I have to say that this is so big that it is very nice to be able to flip through this book instead of going through the PDF. But the PDF is also awesome because I can do a word search, and I really enjoy being able to do that. I can't really do a word search in here. And, in fact, that's one of my plans for the next edition of this, is I would like to, to add an index to this. What i like to do right now is quickly go over with you, discuss with you what's in this book. And I'm not going to go into really deep depth as to what's in it, um, but it starts off with... Um, the revelation on the plate of brass that I had. And, and I had this actually in uh, June of 2021. I was praying to the Lord about witnesses. You know, that was the last thing on my list that I had not received. And the Lord basically told me that he, God, was going to be my witness. And that as people read the book, then they would become witnesses as, as the Spirit testifies in his truth. So you can read that revelation. And then... And there's an introduction, and then there's, this is the actual introduction to the plates of brass. And so because of the fact that this is so big and we don't have the ability to do the super thin scripture-esque type of printing, every time we get to a point where we have enough of the plates of brass, this will be put in the cover. So if someone else is told to translate the plates of brass, even though this is Creative Commons license, this is my verbal 
agreement that you are welcome to take my translation of this and put it in yours because it's it should be the same as what you're is, is when you see the plates of brass. So the five books of Moses, Nephi tells us that there's five books of Moses. And I before I get into that, one last thing I want to share with you, and that is um why is it called the Torah of Moses? Well, for the longest time, I was calling the five books of Moses because Nephi calls it the five books of Moses. When I went to make the cover, um, I was doing so very prayerfully. I wanted to be very respectful. I wanted this to be something the Lord would be pleased with. And I just typed out the Torah of Moses from the plates of brass. And I didn't even realize I did it. I got the book published. I received 10 copies of this book in the mail. And all of a sudden, I was like, that says the Torah of Moses, not the five books of Moses. And I prayed on it, and the Lord was like, yes, this is what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to call this the Torah of Moses. And I was like, why is this called the Torah of Moses? This is the instructions of God. This is the Torah of God, not the Torah of Moses. What's going on here? And I prayed on it, and the Lord just, you know, I unfortunately am, I guess, just too full of self-doubt. But the Lord told me to, to relax. And I'm listening to this really, really good audio book uh, about the Gospel of John from the perspective of a, a Messianic Jew. And in it, he talks about the Torah, and he calls it the Torah of Moses. And all of a sudden, for some reason, as soon as I heard that, I just, like my whole body, my whole spirit, everything just relaxed. I just needed to put my trust in the Lord, stop worrying so much about the vain things of this earth, but that's, that is what this is. This, these are the instructions given to Moses as recorded by the tribe of Joseph, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. So it, it, that is what this is, the, the Torah of Moses. And the Torah of Moses breaks down into five books. Now, I want to be clear here that when you're, I was translating it, for example, the very first book just said, Except for Moses, the book of Moses, the word of the Lord given us by his servant Moses, who freed Israel from her bondage of doubt and disbelief. And my first thought was, this is too long. And so when I was talking to the Council of Elders at that time about it, I just kept calling it Bereshit because that's what the Jews call the book of Genesis. But as I was translating it, I realized this is not Bereshit. This is not the book of Genesis. This has a lot of the same stories told slightly differently. And so because of that, I prayed on it. And, and the Lord reminded me of the five books of Moses that Nephi had stated. And so therefore, I titled this First Moses. But it didn't feel complete. And so I prayed on it more. And the Lord told me to call this the book of beginnings. So when you read on here, up there real quick. So when you're reading here, it says, First Sefer Moses, the first book of Moses, also known as the book of beginnings. And then down below that, it has the actual title. So First Moses or First Sefer Moses is the title that I felt impressed by the Lord to give this book based on what Nephi said. The Book of Beginnings is what it was called based on inspiration the Lord gave me. Whoever actually wrote down the plates of brass, their name for it was the Book of Moses, the Word of Yavah, given us by his servant Moses, who freed Israel from a bondage of doubt and, and disbelief. Now, I also want you to know that there were no chapters in this. When I was translating, it just seemed like there was a break every so often. And in that, when there was that break, when I say a break, I mean, there wasn't a verse. So it's like verse, 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 and then a little statement. Verse, 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 little statement. So what I did was I took those little statements and I made those the chapters. So the, the chapter title, if you will, that is the break. I don't know how the Book of Mormon was written. I know that the chapter, diff the, the way it was chaptered is much different in the original text than it is in, say, the Brighamite edition the OPV, but I can tell you that I basically put this together the way that the Lord impressed me to do it. 
And I want you to know that because I can keep saying that on all five books until we get to the fifth book. The fifth book was actually called the Sefer HaTorah, or in other words, the, the book of the law. And so that's the only one that wasn't called the book of Moses. Um, and then it, it was subtitled, The Words Which Moses Spake Into All of Israel in the Wilderness. And so therefore, my subtitle became Five Sefer Moses, the fifth book of Moses. We can't really call it the book of the law because James Strang's translation of the plates of brass are the book of the law of the Lord. And so that's going to get really confusing. So five Moses really made the most sense. And in this, if you want to go by those those little breaks I was talking about, there were only three. The one above the first was the, oh, I don't have it written down here. Oh, there it is. The Book of Instructions. And that's chapters one through seven. So that would be the first chapter, if you will. And then the second chapter, if you will, would have been eight through 29, the law of the land. And then chapters 30 through 32 was titled the blessings and curses. So what I ended up doing there was, and again, I did this prayerfully. I looked at Deuteronomy because it, that book is closely resembles Deuteronomy. And I basically just tried to use that and prayerfully through inspiration to create my own set of chapters. I was, I prayed on it. I was like, should I do this or not? And what the Lord reminded me is, well, you know, the Book of Mormon, most people know, was completely rechaptered by the Brighamites, by Orson Pratt. So it should be okay. It'll make it easier for people to comprehend, to read, and understand. And so, you know, that's what I did. But I feel it's important for you to understand when you're reading it that these sections are the original chapters so that when you read them, you know how they go together. So with all of that, why am I telling you all this? Because my role isn't to stand on some big hill and tell everybody to come and follow me. My role is to stand next to you and help guide you to be able to do these types of things yourself. I believe wholeheartedly that I am nobody special. That I am, I'm just David. And if I can do this, so can you. And I genuinely believe that if there is a, 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 a major point, I mean, I can go through a number of things, the reasons why I think the Lord wants us to have this now at this time. But the biggest and most important reason in my mind is because of what Moroni says about the days of miracle not being over. We love to read that. And we love to talk about how you know somebody gave somebody a blessing one time and they were healed. But that's really about it. We need to be healing the sick. We need to be raising the dead. We need to be the prophetic people that, that knows how and when to step in and, and do small things that change the world. We can only do that if we're all prophets, seers, and revelators. And Paul, like Paul says, we should be seeking out all of the gifts. All of the gifts of the Spirit. What the revelation that's in here on the plate of brass says is that if you have read the Book of Mormon and had that spirit of prophecy and revelation unlocked, and you, you have that gift of the Spirit, then when you read this, you will know that it is God's Word, just like the Book of Mormon, just like the Bible. <clears throat> as you study it, and as you learn from it, using it to build your personal relationship with God, I genuinely believe that this will help us as a people unlock, unlock our divine potential here upon the earth in this life. So my Thursday thought for you this week is please take the time to read, study, and pray on this book. I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy it because you can download a free PDF. 
if you want to buy it, it's available on Amazon, and there's a link on the website to where you can buy it sort of directly from us. It will be on Kindle as quickly as possible, and there'll be a link there once it is, so you can get it there. It'll only we have to charge, I think, 99 cents for Kindle books. Uh, we can't we can't get them out for free, um, and, and that's just a limitation that you know because of the process that we use, the company that we use to to publish these things. But there's a free PDF, so access is there. And I also want to send out an invitation. We need this book translated into other languages, and the Lord has told me that's not my role. My role is to get it into English. So if you read this book and you can help translate it into any other language. We need your help doing so. So my message for you today is let's take a little bit of time to check this book out and find out for ourselves why the Lord wants it out today. What do you think its purpose is? Because I want to know your thoughts on that. I've shared my thoughts, but I want to know what you think. Because we're probably both right. And by sharing our thoughts with one another, we'll have more information and be able to grow together in fellowship. So that's my Thursday thought for you, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.